for myself that they might declare my praise. For a few moments this morning, as the Lord your God, I want to simply encourage the people of God and say, watch God do it. Watch God do it. I must admit that as we go through this journey of Lent, it has customarily been my practice and my intention uh, to stay faithful to the narratives or readings that are assigned uh, universally in the Christian church as it pertains to this season of Lent. Customarily, there are various readings that are assigned for each specific Sunday. And within those readings, there are Old Testament readings, there are readings from the Psalms, there are readings from the Gospels, and there are readings from the Epistles. And my general practice has been during uh, the Lenten season to be faithful to the reading of the Gospels as we walk through the life and the journey of Christ. But this morning, as we were considering the various passages, this Old Testament record was one of the assigned readings for today, and this particular passage uh, began to leap in my spirit. Uh, it's one that many of us have read before. It's one that many of us know, uh, that we're familiar with. Uh, but every now and then, God has to take an old word and say something new to us. Every now and then, God has to take an old word and remind us of something he's already said so that we will not lose sight of what God's getting ready to do. And, and I want to suggest to us this morning that God is speaking to us corporately as well as individually because every now and then, God wants us to understand that he's about to do something. I, I know that all of us live in a, in a mindset of anticipation and expectation when we're expecting something to happen. There are certain things that we expect for the sake of expectancy, but then there are some things that we expect simply. There are those other things you expect because God has simply said so. And in this particular passage, you will need to know that God is declaring something that he's going to do that has not necessarily been done before. He's going to do the unusual. He's going to do the unordinary. He's going to do the unexpected. Every now and then, God does the unexpected. And because he does the unexpected, he forewarns you that I'm about to do something that you're not expecting, but watch me do it. I'm about to show you something that you might not have seen before, but watch me do it. I'm about to reveal something to you that you have not always perceived before, but watch me do it. And so he makes this mighty declaration to his people through his prophet, and the prophet stands on the forefront and begins to declare to the people that very thing that he has heard from God. Now it's a precarious position for a prophet to be in a place to declare a word from God when God says something unusual and out of the ordinary. Because our ears are usually akin to the ordinary, but every now and then God will raise up the voice in the earth that will declare to the people who have an ear for God to something that they have not always understood. That's why the word reminds us, he that has an ear, let him hear, let her hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That's why when we enter into the sacred place, we need to open our hearts and our minds to hear a word from the Lord. How many have made up in their spirit this morning, I just want to hear a word from the Lord. Yeah. I just come expecting a word from the Lord. You see, I need to hear a word from the Lord because my mind is foggy and my mind is cloudy and, and my week has been heavy and my, my day has not gone so well and my night has not been all that comfortable. But I'm going to show up in this place. I need to put all that aside. I need to clear the whole way so I can hear from heaven. And I need God to speak to me as only God can speak. And I expect God to say something that only God will say. Now, God might say something that's familiar, but every now and then I need God to say something to me that I'm not necessarily expecting. And, and so God begins to speak to the prophet and says to the prophet, declare this word to the people who opens up a way in the sea. Now, 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 who, who makes a path in the mighty water? Who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army? In other words, look at what I've already done. You do remember. 
remember that I'm the same God that made a way in the water. You do believe I'm the same God that opened up a path in the mighty sea. Well, what are you talking about? Well, obviously he's referencing the Exodus out of Egypt when God had already done something in times past. This is why we bear witness to the record that God has already done. You see, the God that we serve this morning is not a new God. He's not a strange God. He, he's not an unfamiliar God. He's not an outdated God. He's not a God without a track record. He's not a God that has not moved in times past. But the record is already in place. The record is already clear. God has an almighty track record. And if you don't understand that God has a track record, you just need to check the record out every now and then. Because God has been moving for a long time. Do you remember in the beginning, even before beginning began, that God had understand who he is. And, and so there are, there are many ideologies at work, but only one true and living God. And one true and living God stands up in the history of, in the angels of history and declares himself, I am that I am. I'm the God of your fathers. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Jacob. I'm the God of Sarah. I'm the God of Rachel. I'm the God of Leah. Yeah. We need to get it. 